Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review and it's actually just going to be a little bit of me getting up here and rambling. Um, some may say complaining, but you know what? Someone has to do it. So today we're going to talk about a fragrance that Creed put out a decade ago and now that they are owned by Caring, they are re-releasing the fragrance uh, and it is called Millicene 1849. Now, uh, if you are a Creed head, you realize that this is the 2013 bottle. Actually, not only is this the uh, vintage version, but this is the second bottle of this fragrance that I had. I actually went through an entire, uh, if you look at the bottom, you can see the batch code. Mine is, ah, uh, there you go, up, 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 there you go. Uh, 15U01, so it's a 2015. My original bottle was a 2013. So I've gone through this, and this bottle right here is like right here. Right above the writing is about where the juice is. Actually, I'm gonna do a fresh spray while we're just kicking the shit here in the beginning. Um, the normal Creed atomizer that just douses your hand with juice. So they are re-releasing this fragrance um, as a Herod's exclusive again. They've changed it to a matte bottle, ooh. And you get 100 mils for $318, okay? So, um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about what's going on here in the fragrance world because if you've been following my channel, you know that I recently did a review of this. This is one of uh, Amouage's crystal line, and Amouage is re-releasing this line, doing a gold um, and crystal, crystal and gold man and crystal and gold woman for $1,950, okay? So Amois doing their best Roja interpretation. And Creed now re-releasing a fragrance that was discontinued again. Um, and so we're seeing this rehashing in the fragrance world that's going on over and over again. Now, I think Creed will be the very first one to tell you that, well, this is not the same fragrance. It's got the same name, but if you look at the notes, they're almost completely different. So the note listing in the original one we're going to talk about today, the one I know, is um, a 2013 release, no perfumer listed. Uh, Calabrian bergamot in the top, jasmine, ylang lang, cedar, patchouli, bourbon, vanilla, musk, sandalwood, and oud. Okay, that's the, that's the note listing. Um, in the new one, it's bergamot, cypress, grapefruit, lemon. Already we have three extra notes added. The heart is Bulgarian rose, iris, jasmine, uh, auriculatum, which I think is the Egyptian jasmine. Did you know there's like 85 different types of jasmine or something I read? Crazy. Turkish rose and ylang lang. And then a base of frankincense, laurel, oud, sandalwood, Texas cedar, and thyme. So look at the notes in the new one that are not in the old one. Cypress, grapefruit, lemon, Bulgarian rose, iris, um, Turkish rose, frankincense, laurel, thyme. Those are all new notes. So I have no clue how close this new version smells. Someone who smelled it left me a comment and said that they thought it smelled like Diagolev, um, which wouldn't surprise me, one niche company copying another. Um, Diagolev is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. I doubt it smells exactly like Diagolev, um, but someone left a comment saying that. I've never smelled the new one. But just FYI um, of sort of what's going on, if you will. So rehashing of old ideas and charging a lot of money for it. That's kind of where the niche game is at nowadays. And this fragrance, uh, speaking of rehashing ideas, goes even further than that because if you are familiar with what ended up happening at Creed, Creed um, used perfumers, okay? Uh, they, they use some pretty famous perfumers now in some of their previous uh, iterations of their fragrances. Like, for example, the one of my favorite fragrances of all time from Creed is Royal Oud, okay? This is the 500 mil flacon. Um, this is the 250 mil. Look, you can see I've gone through an entire... I went through... An entire bottle of this. I had a I had a 120 mil bottle of this. Used the whole thing. Got the 250 mil flacon. Used the whole thing, and got the 500 mil because I love this fragrance. One of my favorite creeds of all time. And if you're familiar with the story of that, there there is a reason I'm going back through some history here. The reason is is that that fragrance ended up being finally disclosed once Olivier Creed sold the company and he no longer cared what people thought. He disclosed that Julian Raskinet made that fragrance, okay? Well, Julian Raskinet is the, is the pupil, or um, Pierre Bourdon was the, was the master, and Julian Raskinet was the disciple, if you will. 
And if you've ever smelled Boiterage or French Lover, if you if you prefer, you'll know that this and this share some similarities. This is much earthier and um, almost like soily, like a like a like a standing in you know a damp forest. There's this earthy sort of green feeling to this. This really stays with this woody. There's an IFF material that Rich Mitch swears is in a fragrance I've never smelled called. Impression Cedar Wood Heart from Ostens, and he claims that the um, note in there, that IFF material, is very similar to the material used in Royal Oud. I've never smelled uh, Impression Cedar Wood Heart, but I can tell you that this fragrance right here from 2013 has a very, very similar oody, woody note as this, okay? There are some differences though, and we're gonna talk about some of those differences. This is not a comparison video because I have yet to review this. This actually, I think, made number one on my favorite Western Oud. I, I absolutely love Royal Oud. Um, Royal Oud is one of my most worn fragrances in my entire life. I love, Royal Oud was like a signature scent for me. I wore it all the time. I, I love Royal Oud, huge fan. And, um, and so when I smelled this for the very first time, I went, oh wow, because you instantly get the Royal Oud bit. It's a dry, woody, um, slightly green, but really what sets this fragrance apart to me is the floral aspect. And because the floral aspect is so pronounced here, it's almost like you've taken the um, sort of outline of Royal Oud and you've really amped up the florals. So there's a lot of white florals in the heart, a ton. Actually, what ends up happening is the fragrance starts off with a very musky, um, and very powdery smelling jasmine, extremely powdery. In fact, so powdery that I almost get the, every time I wear this fragrance, I get the image of old English judges with powdered wigs sitting on a bench, right? And, and looking down at everybody because they have the powdered wigs on. Yes, indeed. Um, and I just get that old, you know, image, or imagine the uh, founding fathers in America, revolutionary America, right, with their powdered white wigs, that, it gives me that image every single time. There's something about the powderiness in here that is very pronounced, and then, on top of that very powdery jasmine, comes this banana-like ylang-ylang. It's very rubbery and creamy, slightly custard-like. Like, imagine the um, um, creaminess of a, a, a custard, uh, and just imagine if you take that in isolation, right? That gives you an idea of what that Ylang Ylang note smells like. And the Ylang Ylang in here, to be fair, if you just took it in, in and of itself, if you just removed the Ylang Ylang note, I think it's a very well done floral part, okay? Uh, the florals in here, I think, are well done, but it sort of clashes a little bit with the whole Royal Oud idea, if that makes sense. So I love the woodiness in Royal Oud. Uh, but the woodiness in Royal Oud doesn't seem to go very well with the way that they did the florals here, okay? So it just feels like they took this and put it on top. And that's why it has sort of um, taken on this idea. I've heard a couple people in the community say that they think that maybe this was like, these were mods of the same fragrance, that this was like a mod of, of this fragrance that didn't get chosen. This ended up being the final fragrance, but they kept this one in reserve. And whenever Herod's, because this is a Herod's exclusive, that's why you got the Herod's sort of green, if you will. Um, once Herod's needed an exclusive fragrance, they pulled this one out of the, of the cellar, of the vault, if you will, and uh, said, here you go, and gave it to him. That's, that's a theory that I've heard espoused on the internet. Don't know if it's true or not, but it makes a lot of sense to me, okay? Um, and I think that when you watch men react to this fragrance, you're going to get a lot of, oh, or, whoa, that's way too feminine. That sort of powdery floral opening, I think, puts a lot of guys off. They can't wear this. I actually like this fragrance. I have a lot of memories with this fragrance, too, to be fair, because like I said, they only sold it in the 75 mil bottles, which are now discontinued. Um, they don't, Creed doesn't do 75 mil bottles, except for the new Aventus Absolu, which is 500 and something dollars. So this one, you get 100 mil, and the new version and it's 318. So obviously they've realized um, their prices are insane. Uh, I'm, I'm glad they didn't price this Herod's exclusive at 500 and something dollars, although I wouldn't have been surprised if they did. Um, and so what's interesting about this fragrance though is the more you wear the perfume, the more you realize 
that that musky, powdery, jasmine, white floral opening is not the only thing that happens in the opening. There is this uh, Creed's patented Calabrian bergamot in the top. And to be fair to Creed, I know I shit on them sometimes, deservedly so. But um, if Creed does anything well, they do citruses fantastic. Some of the best Creed's are still unreviewed on this channel. I haven't reviewed things like... Um, Silver Mountain Water, which I, I ran through an entire bottle of Silver Mountain Water in my life as well. Uh, that one was only the 75 mil, but I went through an entire bottle of that. I went through an entire 120 mil of Millicene Imperial, um, and now all I have is a little sample left over. I went through um, so many Creed's in my life, um, but Creed does citruses very well. That is, the, that is sort of their claim to fame, this very fresh, vibrant, uplifting bit, right? And so, like I said, this fragrance... When you first spray it, it and smell it and wear it for the first couple times, you're going to think that those florals seem out of place. And they do. To me, they do seem out of place. But the more you wear it, the more you will pick up on that Calabrian bergamot in the top. And, and what's interesting is some fragrances, the bergamot can come off as slightly metallic in smell. Some people don't like that metallic citrus vibe. I actually really do. I like it when bergamot comes off metallic. Shalimar has a very metallic bergamot in the top to me. I think just when it's used in big doses, it can come across that way to the nose. And this sort of musky effect of bergamot, like this musky citrusy-like effect comes through. And so just imagine this extra powdery jasmine mixed with this extra musky and slightly metallic Calabrian bergamot mixing with this floral bouquet of that custard-like ylang lang Definitely, 100%, without a doubt, one of the most powdery creeds I have ever smelled in my life, ever. Um, and then, to make it even stranger, comes the, you know, uh, oud note, if you will. I don't know how else to say it, other than to say oud note. But um, I don't know if there's oud in here, and I don't want to get sued. So, if Creed is using real oud, bravo for you. It doesn't smell like real oud. It smells like some cheap, woody material that you would smell in any other fragrance, to my nose. Um, my opinion. This is very similar to the oud note that's in Royal Oud, in that it's mostly cedar wood with Creed's very patented sandalwood base. So, there's cedar in the heart, sandalwood in the base. Creed does a very, very convincing, smooth sandalwood. Is there real sandalwood in there? Who knows? Uh, whether it's real or not is not the point. They do a very convincing sandalwood note. That's another thing they do very well. Very creamy, smooth, um, you know, spongy sandalwood, right? Very beautifully done. I love Creed sandalwoods. Even in their, um, even in some of the fragrances that don't get the hype, like Himalaya, which I'll review on the channel one of these days and stuff like that. I love the way Creed does sandalwoods. I love the way they do citruses. What I don't like how they do is oud. They do maybe one of the worst oud interpretations of all time. And, you know, this is back in 2013, though. Remember, when all you had to do was say oud and everyone would whip out their wallet. Oh, here's $500. Um, it's not like that anymore. People are much more educated and they're much more, I would say, um, they give money away to some of these fragrance companies, especially with what they're asking, with much more discretion, in my opinion. And so what ends up happening uh, is this... Oud note is supposed to come forward, but it really smells like one of the most unconvincing ouds I've ever smelled. Um, and the fragrance turns from slightly powdery jasmine with that metallic bergamot to slightly musky and um, woody. And the woodiness will remind you of what you're getting in Royal Oud. And so you're going to get... It almost feels like... Um, that cedar wood um, sort of um, frankincense, because in Royal Oud, to me, there is an aspect of it that the fragrance feels almost like an EKG machine, you know, up and down with the chart, right? There's something in Royal Oud that just comes across as, like, fuzzy, and, like, like it's not a static line, you know? Um, it's, it's not a flat line. There's something that's slightly fuzzy in Royal Oud. And I, I definitely get that in Millicene 1849, but I think what they've done is they've used just a little bit of incense, right? So it's like a slightly smoky take on a wood that's mixed with this very uh, earthy 
Angelica. I love Angelica in perfume. One of my favorite sort of hidden notes, if you will. I'm a huge fan of uh, Angelica, and it comes across as very green, and um, there's no Angelica note listed here. So even though the bottle's very green, you just get little hints. So when you're smelling that woodiness, um, you just get little hints of this green smell that comes and goes. Almost like you're smelling a, a, a celery seed, you know, or an herb or something like that, right? Just a hint. Um, and I think that's how they kind of made that very interesting wood note. And so for me, my honest opinion is I would just wear Royal Oud at this point. I mean, there is no way in hell I would ever buy this again. And in fact, when I initially wore this, I was much earlier in my fragrance journey. And so uh, anything with Creed and that price tag, I just assumed was amazing, right? I have become uh, much more cynical in my view. And so now when I wear this, I'm actually not as impressed, to be quite honest with you. I, I definitely pick up the jagged sort of just nonchalant way they threw the flowers on top of this sort of accord, which I like with Royal Oud. Um, and it just seems rushed. It seems like they didn't put very much time into it. And yet I still like the fragrance because I have so many memories wearing this. I wore this so often to the office and stuff like that. Um, and so I have a lot of good memories with the perfume. So I like it. I like what it does. Um, now who knows what the new one is like, but, um, I, I, I couldn't recommend this is the only thing I, I would say this is one that most people probably won't like because of the just strangeness of it all. But if you like Royal Oud or if you like Ostend's Impression Cedarwood Heart and you're interested in maybe a floral take on that, then you can give Millicene 1849 a try. The problem is, is that these bottles go for crazy money now, these vintage bottles. So, um, you know, I don't know what the new one's like. Like I said, I can't vouch for that because it looks like it does have a frankincense note, like I mentioned with Royal Oud. Um, and it has all of these other notes that are not listed. So I have no clue what that's going to be like. It's listed as a woody spicy, whereas this is listed as a floral woody. So, I mean, who knows? Um, the vanilla in here, there's definitely some vanilla in here making it a little bit sweet in the base. That may also put some people off. I don't mind it as much. And you guys know, I don't like my sweet fragrances. Um, you know, the, the vanilla mixing with that custard like ylang, ylang makes it to kind of a very interesting contrast, if you will. But, um, you know, for me, if I was going to recommend something else in this style, I would just tell you to go for French Lover or Bois de Rage. This is a pre-Estee Lauder Frederick Mall bottle before they got purchased by Estee Lauder. And I love this stuff. Um, oh, it's so good. This is This is so much more traditionally masculine in my style than this. Uh, I still enjoy this because I wore it so early in my journey in 2013 um, and 14 and 15, and you can still see I'm still wearing it. But um, I, for me, it's it's Royal Oud um, or French Lover for this style. But this is just a very strange take, almost like a almost like a mod of this type of perfume that didn't do very well, right? Like a, like, a, like a mod that didn't get chosen that they just decided to turn into a perfume because they needed a Herod's exclusive. And that is the other thing about these exclusives is that whenever you see an exclusive fragrance, um, a lot of times it seems like the trend has been to jack up the price, give you something that smells mediocre at best, let's say, average at best, and charge you, you know, extra money because it's an exclusive. And that's why I have such a problem with some of these brands like Creed doing their Aventus Absolute and exclusive, you know, act now, don't let regret take on, you know, don't let future regret play a role, buy now, um, or Amwash, we're only doing 500 of the new crystal bottles, you better get in now for two grand or, or 1950 before they're gone. Um, those kind of marketing techniques, they put me off straight away, instantly put off. Uh, and so this new Herod's exclusive 1849, I don't know. I mean, I'll be, in, I'd be interested to smell it. If someone sent me some, maybe I'll do a comparison video. If I still have any juice left, uh, this, this bottle is going pretty quick. Like I said, the juice is like right about here. So I'm almost done with two bottles of this stuff, but, um, but yes, let me know what you think. If you've had a chance to smell this little rare beast, uh, let me know, let me know what you think of Creed's tactic of reissuing stuff that is vaulted and um, just what's going on in the industry in general. Love to see your faces in the comments. Love, love the feedback, love the back and forth. Um, 
one thing I should mention, December 10th, Sultan Pasha is coming on, the great Sultan Pasha. Um, he's coming on the channel for a live stream, so if you have questions, I'd love to see you guys there. Uh, I haven't done a live stream in a while, but um, I'm very excited for that one. It'll be December 10th at noon Central Standard Time, so um, to have someone like Sultan Pasha on the channel. Those are some of my favorite videos I've ever done, the, the videos with Russian Adam and Liz Moores and stuff like that. I don't think I've put out better content on the channel. There's an entire interview playlist you can go find. I've created a lot of playlists because I created a playlist for each brand I've done. Um, and so when I do this, this will go into the Creed playlist and stuff like that. But there's an interview playlist. There's also a stream playlist. So, you know, if you want to go check some of those older interviews out, I think it's some of the best content I've put on the channel. And I'm very excited to have Sultan Pasha and all of his knowledge on the channel, if you will. So, um, that's sort of my take on Creed Milliseum 1849 from 2013. Thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.